Good morning and welcome to our Daily Word and Prayer. My name is Tom Short. So glad to have you along with us today on this Sunday morning as we worship God, talk about His Word. Special welcome to you this morning who remembered it's Daylight Savings Time. You sprung forward and you're with me live here at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And of course, if you watch later in the day, either because you didn't remember that or because you just built that into your schedule to watch later, a special welcome to you as well. God bless you. So glad to have you along. Sundays we often like to talk about our churches and our worship. Worship is the declaration of the greatness of God. Worship is the declaration of, of what you believe or who you believe is of supreme and ultimate worth. Our culture, indeed all of, all of history has fought with this. From the very beginning, uh, the worship of God versus idols, false gods, false pursuits in life. This, this is the age-old story of humanity, is will we worship God and declare He is the Almighty, or do, we, or do we seek other idols and displace God and put other things or other people or other pursuits upon the throne of ultimate worth and value? Why do you worship God? I'd like to talk this morning about something that is very prominent in Scripture, but often overlooked. And this is what, in the, in the book of Revelation, when the angels and the 24 elders and the living creatures fall down and worship God, look at what they say in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power. Why? Why is He worthy to receive glory, honor, and power? Why is He worthy for us to fall down and worship Him? Why is He worthy of this? Now, I must say in Scripture there's, there are a number of reasons. Obviously, in the book of Revelation, where we're at right now, He's the Lamb who overcame. He's the only one worthy only one able to open the seals of the book. He's the only one able to put your name in the book of life. He's the only one who rose from the dead, the firstborn, Jesus, the firstborn. He sits upon the throne of His Father. These are all reasons to worship God, and these are things that we should uh, obviously remember. But notice also here, let's go back to today's verse, and let's start again. Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor, and power. Why? For you created all things, and because of your will they existed and were created. Creation. Because God made us. Because God is the creator of all that there is. All that is seen, and all that is unseen. The unseen things, you know, no one's ever actually seen like electrons, protons, but everything is built on that, and God is the creator of all of that. And these days, when, when that was written, they'd never seen a DNA molecule. Now we're able to see and experiment with these things. God was the creator of that. That didn't just happen. That didn't evolve. That's not the result of chance. In every DNA in your body, there's, there's more information in that little strand invisible to the naked eye in which there's probably about a trillion of them in your body, that little, that little bit of information has uh, designed everything about you and determines everything about you and, and is the, the data, the code for everything about you. And indeed, from that little first cell that was created, that was reproduced, shall we say, that little first cell came, not only your eye color and your hair color, but code for your heart, your lungs, your blood, everything about you. It was all in that code. And this is an amazing, amazing thing. Out the things that are, he's a creator of all that is seen and of unseen. We see the stars, we see the earth, we see the mountains, we see the flowers, the trees, we see the animal kingdom, we see the human beings, we see all these things. God is the maker of all of that. God is the maker of all of that. Look in Psalm 100. In the Old Testament, and a song that I'd often, one of our favorite songs as, as I was a young Christian, shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth, 
Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is He that has made us. And we, are, and we, and not we ourselves, we are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Friends, what a comment. No, come before the Lord with worship, with joyful singing, with praise. Why? For it is He, we should know that it is He that has made us. We didn't make ourselves. I think that, you know, I think of this as straight out biology and creation versus evolution. I think of it also, if you've been successful in this world in anything, if, if whatever you've done well, no, the Lord has made you. You didn't make yourself. The Lord made you. The Lord blessed you. The Lord has been good to you. But also, the Lord made you. The Lord created you. You are His workmanship, it says in Ephesians chapter 2. We, are, we, we were created in Him for good works. This is all throughout the Scripture. I didn't have time to write. Uh, I want to read from Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. We'll start with verse 6. And I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven, having an eternal gospel to preach. An eternal gospel to preach to those who live on the earth and to every nation, tribe, and tongue, and people. And here's what he said with a loud voice. Fear God and give Him glory because the hour of His judgment has come. Worship Him who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and springs of water. Wow, worship Him. Why? Worship the one who made the heavens, the earth, the seas, the springs, and who made you. My friends, this is something that, that often it seems like the modern church is quiet about. We're fearful because of evolution. And we think that somehow evolution has disproven the book of Genesis. Indeed, if we're quiet about this, we you better be aware of the other side's talking about it. The people who are attacking the Bible and who say science has disproven the Bible, they're not being quiet. They're activists. They're on the march. They're attacking Scripture. Indeed, one of the on campus, I, I've, heard, if I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times. People say, if I ask you, you believe in God, they say, no, I don't believe in God, I believe in science. As if somehow science, the discovery, the search and examination of the natural world, has somehow disproven the existence of the unseen God. You know, on campus, I, people say to me things like, Tom, the difference between you and me, they say is, they believe in science, I believe in God. I say, well, well, okay, uh, show me evolution. And they're talking about evolution. I say, show me evolution. And they always respond by saying, well, show me your God. And I admit, I say, well, listen, I, I acknowledge you. I believe in a God you cannot see. I believe it's reasonable to believe in God. I believe there's evidence for God, but you can't see God. If you did, you'd die right away. You know, he's, he's, he's brighter than the, you'd go blind. He's brighter than the noonday sun. So you can't see God. So show me, but, but you, you believe in science. Science ought to be observable. Science is something that you see with your eyes. You can touch, taste or touch or or examine, it's physical, so show me your evolution. And they kind of chuckle and say, well, Tom, you can't see evolution. I say, you can't see it? No, it happens so slowly. It happens over such a long period of time, you can't actually see it happening. To which I say, well, you believe in something you can't see? I admire your faith. You see, we need not back down on this one. We need not back down. Indeed, there's so much reason to believe that there is a God who created. The, 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 the people who don't believe in God and don't give Him glory as a creator, they think all this intelligent information just happened. All this design happened without a designer. All this intelligence happened without an intelligent being behind it. All the beauty happened without an artist, shall we say. All that there is here in our world, they'd say it just is the result of chance. And indeed, because of our silence on it and our failure to worship God as our creator, more and more people, young people, are, being, uh, are, are losing faith, thinking that somehow what we believe is not true. You know, I've been involved in this debate with creation evolution for, you know, close to 50 years now, I imagine. 
And in the beginning, it was just, you know, I like to argue the facts and I like to give the reasons we believe in this and so on. But as the years went by, and I developed my, in my own life a far greater interest in studying the world, the, the world that we see, the, uh, the, the world of God's creation. They want to call it the natural world. I want to call it the world God made. And I want to understand and, and see, examine that and learn from it. I was never all that interested in it before, but I've become interested in studying these things. And I think the thing about evolution that so has bothered me the most through the years. Yes, I'm disturbed at how many people have left the faith because of it. But there's something else that's disturbed me deeply. And that is how the belief in evolution, that it all just happened by chance, has robbed God of the glory He deserves. My friend, learn how to look at the world we live in and give God glory. Learn how to look at, see, see yourself in the mirror, see the stars in the heavens, see the beautiful, beautiful flower, see the springtime come alive here in our country. Whatever you see, learn how to give God the glory. He's the maker of all this. He's the Almighty. He can do anything. I'm struck with how in about three weeks, we're going to be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. We're going to be celebrating that there was a man who was dead and rose from the dead and he conquered death. There is no scientific explanation for that. All scientific evidence we have would say that cannot happen. And indeed, if science is your ultimate source of truth, You'll, be, you'll have to say that it did not happen because there is no scientific way that happened. That was a miracle, the resurrection of Christ. And yet I think of how many people, how many churches will not worship God our Creator because they say it is scientifically impossible. There's no rational explanation for how all this could have come about without the theory of evolution and millions and millions and hundreds of millions of years happening slowly and so forth. And they won't give God the credit. They'll say that God raised Jesus from the dead, for which there is no scientific explanation, and it was a miracle, but that God could create the earth, the heavens and the earth, in six days. And that couldn't happen because science says so, and that could not have been a miracle. Do you see how that doesn't work? My friends, we want to give God the glory. He's our creator. And if he's your creator, he, he gives us the rules of life. He's the one who tells us how life is to be lived. He's the ultimate. He's the supreme. From him, through him, and to him go all glory. Amen? Amen. Let's pray about it. Oh, Father in heaven, we give you praise, honor, and glory this day. We declare that, that you are the maker of all things. For your pleasure, we exist. It is your will that we exist, and we exist for you, to bring you glory, to bring you honor. We confess, Lord, it's so easy in our world today to think we exist for ourselves or to make our own way, or, but it's you who've made us. It's you who've created us. We praise you with joyful song, our Creator, and we declare that we, we honor God. We worship Him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, everything that's in it, who made us. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you our lives. Father, we confess that you deserve our lives as our maker, and you deserve our lives as our redeemer, Lord Jesus Christ. We belong to you, and we live today to give you glory. We'll do this with our lips as we praise you. We'll do it with our choices, our values, our life, our faith as we live for you. We'll do it with your words as we witness for you. All these things, we praise you now and give glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. I don't know about you, but I love the Word of God. I love talking about these things. Friends, listen. We have no reason to be intimidated by secularists, by skeptics, by those who don't believe in God, by those who've rejected the Scripture. But if you are intimidated by them, if you are, if you're, you're kind of afraid to talk to them, afraid to go head to head with them because you think they they'll run circles around you, well, that just tells me you need to get stronger in the Word of God. You need to get stronger in knowing what we believe and why. We don't need to be timid. 
in front of unbelievers. There's one reason we get here in the Word of God every day. We do come here every day, 8.30 a.m. live, and people come here and you get strengthened. So if you're new or if you're just sporadic or just occasional watcher, make a commitment to come here regularly. Get in the Word of God with us regularly. See if it won't change your life and strengthen you so that you can be the witness, the light, the, the force for good in our world that God created you to be. So glad to have you along. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And until then, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.